It's a big night of high school sports in our community. The News 8 Highlight Zone starts now. Good evening, I'm Greg Wavernick. In their first ever trip to the WIAA State Girls Basketball Tournament, the Aquinas Blue Golds get to play on championship Saturday. 27-0 Aquinas facing 26-1 Howard's Grove. Blue Golds head coach Dave Donarski heading into this one saying, these are the two best teams this season in Division 4. Aquinas jumps out to the early lead. Medessa Collins the steal up to Lexi Donarski for the layup. It's 8-0 Blue Golds. Later on in the half, Donarski to Jessa Peterson. She knocks down the triple. Aquinas leads 22-17 at the break. Second half, seven point advantage for Aquinas when Donarski hits another two, makes it 30-21. The freshman with a big game this afternoon, showing off the mid-range now. Donarski a game high, 23 points. Lady Blue Golds led it 40-32 with five minutes to play, but Howard's Grove goes on a run late. Olivia Staus, hoop and foul. Tigers up 41-40 with 49 seconds to go. So after some free throws, Aquinas now down three, last chance. Kaya Steiner at the buzzer makes it, but is it a two or a three? Ref review, her foot was on the line. It's a two-pointer at the buzzer. Aquinas loses by one. With more, here is News 8's Brian McClune. A wild finish at the Rest Center in the Division IV title game between Aquinas and Howard Grove. The Lady Blue Golds leading for 33 minutes, but the Tigers used a late 12-1 run to take a three-point lead with 10 seconds left. In Aquinas' last possession, Kaya Steiner hit a shot at the buzzer that was called a two after a lengthy review, leaving them one point short of Howard Grove, 44-43. I knew it wasn't a three. Uh, what I was trying to do is get a timeout so that we could run a set. And I mean, again, it's chaos out there. It's not anybody's, but I was trying to call a timeout as soon as they entered the ball to Lexi. So it's just, there's a lot of stuff going on and it, it didn't happen. And then, you know, Kai made a heck of a shot. I agree. It's just, unfortunately, we couldn't get into what we were trying to get into. And that was, uh, that's, that's my job. So it didn't happen. So yeah, I knew that that was not a three. We got a, we had a really bright future. I, the toughest part for us is that we had, we had a nice senior class who's a really competitive group. Maybe not necessarily basketball players, but they added a lot of value to our team and it would have been nice to finish it off for those guys. So that, that's a tough one to swallow. Aquinas does graduate four players, but will return its top four scores next season, which they hope will be a return trip to the Rush Center. That's going to do it from Green Bay. I'm Brian Clune, News 8 Sports. Thanks, Brian. When the News 8 Highlight Zone returns, four area boys basketball teams, including Central, try to punch their ticket to state today. Welcome back to the News 8 Highlight Zone. Central boys on the doorstep to their second state trip in as many seasons. A win against Wausau East, and the Red Raiders get to play next Friday afternoon at the Kohl's Center. And this one, this got the shot that got them going early. Adam Oberman from deep buries it. Central's first points of the game. Then Kobe King took over. He wants another chance in Madison. Only missed one shot in the first half while scoring 20 points. And this big time jam, they're up double digits. Then right before the half, big shot by Bailey Kale. Nothing but net from deep. 46-28 Red Raiders at the break. But they weren't satisfied yet. Kale again off the dribble. Somehow gets it to fall, he has 18 points. But the afternoon belonged to King. He goes 18 for 22 from the field. A game high, 41 points. What a performance. All Central, 92-53, as they are going back to Madison. With more from Stevens Point, here is News 8's Colin Talbert. Well, if there are any doubts of Central getting back to the Kohl Center, Kobe King and the Red Raiders put them to rest early. 20 of his 41 points before intermission to give Central a big lead heading into the locker room. Really from, from the first possession, both on the offensive and defensive end, and, and obviously Kobe was on and the guys feed off of that. You know, in my opinion, he's the best player in the state, and uh, um, I think you saw that today. I kind of tell you that look in his eye. Uh, and I, I kind of felt that this is what we would see from him, and, and that's what he what he did. We're, we're getting better every day in practice, and uh, every guy's more and more confident as each day passes by, so we're more excited, and uh, we just wanted to come out and perform to our best ability, and I think we did a good job with that today. It's pretty surreal. I mean, obviously, ever since last year, you know, walking off the court and losing to Arcana, we always wanted to get back there. That's always been our goal, and you know, let's make a little different ending, hopefully. This is our last go around for our seniors, and uh, just to you know, be back up here again, and to win like this in front of you know, all of uh, 
in our Raider Nation. It's, it's pretty special. So Central back to state for the second straight year, and up next for them, a rematch with Wanakee, who they beat by 21 back in January. Reporting from Stevens Point, Colin Telbert, News 8 Sports. Thank you, Colin. A Cinderella run by Mostyn has them taking on Prescott. Mostyn trying to earn their first state appearance since 1974. First half, Mostyn's Joe Bauer hits the three to tie it up, and the Golden Eagles were up by two at the break. Second half now, more Mostyn. This time, Keenan Fassett nails the three. Mostyn goes up by three. More Mostyn, more Fassett. This time, driving to the bucket and laying it in. Their lead now up to five. But the dream run not meant to be. Prescott goes on a huge run. Seven-footer Owen Hamilton bucket right there. Prescott finishes strong and beats Mostyn 78-62. to They will have each of these moments and actually they'll have every practice that they ever had together because that time spent is, is awesome. And uh, the lessons learned, the relationships built just make this a wonderful experience. Cochran Fountain City tries to take down undefeated Darlington in Division IV. First half, Pirate, Pirates start out hot from deep. Mason Becker rises and fires. CFC leads it 14-11. Late in the half, Becker swings it to Tristan Schmidtneck. He steps up and splashes home a triple. Pirates go into the locker room, leading 30-27. Second half now, Darlington catches fire. Drive and kick to Will Schwartz. A 10-2 run puts the Redbirds up 37-32. Less than four to go. Nick Thorsell steps out on the pick and pop, knocks down the three. Pirates back within four, but that's as close as they would get. Braden McDonald hitting the mid-range jumper. CFC coming up short. They fall to undefeated Darlington, 67 to 55. They played their hearts out for me. Uh, that's all a guy can ask for is if they leave everything out here. And the guys that were on that floor at the end, I guarantee there's nothing left. They, they gave their everything tonight. What a game in Division 5. Bangor taking on Shellsburg. Cardinals looking for their first state berth since 1936. Buckle in. First half, Bangor starts out strong. Luke Reeder from behind the arc. They lead it 29-23 at the half. But this was a game of runs. Back comes Shellsburg. Noah Wan, three, ties it at 31. Back and forth we go. Reeder, drive to the hoop and scores. 52-52 with three minutes left. After the Miners take the lead by three, Caleb Miedema answers. Big time shot from deep, ties it at 52, 126 left. Reeder then makes a pair at the line, so Cardinals up two here. Last chance for Schulzberg, and it's Juan. Somehow gets the three to fall with just one second remaining. Bangor can't convert on the ensuing possession, and Schulzberg wins by two, 60 to 58. I was happy with the way our kids battled. Uh, they gave great effort all night. Um, you know, kid just hit a heck of a shot. Um, defensively, we're there. Kid made a play. That's, I mean, give credit to him. But I was really proud of the way that our guys battled at the end there. Moving to Minnesota, two wins still needed to earn a state bid. And that tough section 1-2A bracket has Caledonia taking on Pine Island. First half, Owen King intercepts a pass, and he would go coast to coast the other way. Finishes with the right, Cal up 28-20. In the second half, Caledonia was spread the floor to pull out Pine Island's big man from the paint, and that leads to many layups, including the action by Martin Morum. Extends the Warriors' lead to 15. Panthers, though, get back into this game. Joe Bauer tosses it up and hits the layup to fall. That's now just a four-point game. However, Owen King took the game over down the stretch. He gets to the hoop and finishes. Cal would then force a quick turnover. And the ball ends right back up into the hands of King for another score. Caledonia moving on with a 70-57 to victory. We knew Pine Island was a really good team. Finstein and the big guy, you know, they were going to be a handle for us inside. So we just tried to, we took them for real. We tried to focus on boxing them out. And we knew we'd have to hit the boards to beat this team. Three-seeded Winona trying to upset the two-seed Northfield. First half, Dakota Matthews knocks down the triple from the corner. Winnock start the game on a 10-0 run. They lead it 24-20 at the break. Second half, Northfield comes alive. Alex Rasmussen gets the hoop to go. Raiders up 28-24. Winona answers now. Logan Smith knocks down the three ball. Winhawks back on top, 35-32. But it's Northfield with the last run in this game. Jackson Schlack with the tip for the bucket. Raiders go up 48-42. And Winona's season comes to an end as they lose 
1A East subsection final. Spring Grove taking on Rushford Peterson. First half, Chase Grindy gets to the hoop for the finish in the paint. Spring Grove up 14-11. Second half, back and forth we go here as well. Landon Gorey drains the three. That ties it up at 21. Later in the half, Jacob Polson finishes in the paint. Rush Pete back on top, 33-30. But Spring Grove, an answer again. Grindy, nothing but net from downtown. Ties it again, 33-33. Final seconds of the game now. Landon Scallett drains the three from the corner with five seconds to go. Rushford Peterson up 46-43. On the other end of the floor, Grindy with a final chance to tie at the buzzer. No good. Rushford Peterson holds on. 46-43. When the highlight zone returns, Badgers and Gophers in Big Ten tournament play, and a UWL wrestler goes for a national championship. Welcome back to the News 8 Highlight Zone. Well, the only thing more special than winning a national championship, winning a national championship on your home turf. That's the opportunity tonight for UW lacrosse wrestler Dustin Weinman. Teammate Richard Carlson losing earlier in the day in the semifinal round. First period action in the championship. Weinman strikes first, scores two right here on the takedown, and he tack on another point in each of the next two periods. Weinman wins by decision, four nothing. He finishes as an undefeated national champion. It finally hit me. Um, when I was in the hotel room, I was just trying not to think about it, just trying to think about, okay, let's do the small things. It's one more match, it's one more match, but it's still hitting me even like, holy crap, my, my wrestling career is done. Now. And I went out on top. Welcome back to the News 8 Highlight Zone. It's time for our play of the night, and let's give it to the future Wisconsin Badger who is headed back to the Cole Center. Central senior Kobe King scores 41 points. He was 18 of 22 from the field. Central versus Wanaki Friday at 134, 135 for the Division II state semifinal. We are out of time. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend.